Hey yo, what up Sockers? Today I'm gonna read about Bruce Lee. Alright, Bruce Lee. Yeah, this is gonna be a huge topic, so I'm gonna only cover the very first part, or only read the very first part of his wiki page to make sure that, um, yeah, that I can do my 10 minutes justice, or yeah, to give this man enough credit, because I, I, I want to probably do a second, third, fourth, or fifth, or whatever uh, episode on Bruce Lee, because there's so much to talk about this guy. Not only that he's an inspiration to all Asians, Asian Americans, and anything related, even remotely, to Asians, um, and the male, the Asian male kind of stereotype, and how he... Uh, as uh, the media likes to call it, he shatters the male stereotype. I don't know if he did or he meant, he meant to do that, but um, but his legacy is uh, is just beyond um, what any anyone else I guess in this uh, ethnical or gender role in combination has ever achieved. Yeah, all that uh, blabbing aside. Um, I, I, he, this guy existed way before my time, so, um, I can only, uh, learn about what he did or who he is from the media, from, yeah, basically images, videos, whatever, um, that he has left. So, yeah, I, I, I can only judge the guy that he, I think he is based on, these types of, um, I don't know, what do you call it, um, journalism, there we go, these types of, uh, um, journalism that, you know, may not reflect the, the exact man that he was, but in any case, um, he can live on in our imagination as this perfect demigod that we revere and worship, and I hope that, there will be more um, that's going to be like him that, quote, am I quoting his wife or his daughter? Anyway, I, I forgot. Um, go look it up on YouTube. Uh, quote, puts the manhood in their crutch. Crotch, not crutch. Crotch. There's a difference in the two. Look it up. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what's... Uh, I'm going to say about Bruce Lee before I introduce today's idioms. The first one is, goes up in smoke. That is not like to go to a bar with a terrace, you go up for a cigarette. Um, goes up in smoke simply means that some kind of hope vanished. Um, like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to give that example here, I guess. Um, no, actually I can't. Uh, yeah, like... If you want to get into Harvard, or your parents want you to get into fucking Harvard, um, and Harvard writes you a letter back in your early decision or whatever, um, that says, um, sorry to inform you that, uh, we have carefully reviewed your application and go fuck yourself. That is your hope of going to Harvard goes up in smoke. I think that's loud and clear. Um, out of thin air. Out of thin air means, it, it just means all of a sudden. Actually, I think I'm going to uh, be able to pull out a pretty good one since I'm talking about Bruce Lee. Because that just means suddenly. Like, his fist is in your face out of thin air. That kind of thing. Uh, the third one is for a noble cause. This one's a little harder in association with Mr. Lee. Um, just because... Um, well, I mean, everything that he does is for a noble cause, because he is a public figure, and he is a person of, uh, of, of, uh, popular, of great followings, how do you say that, um, yeah, he is a, a person of influence, there we go, he's an influencer, in, uh, the language of, uh, the 21st century, or the YouTube era, so, uh, for a noble cause just means you're not doing it, you're, <laughs> you're doing something shady, but, um, you're not doing it just because you want to do it, but you're doing it for a, a higher purpose. 
you're doing it for the greater good. There's no such thing. So that's just like bullshit. Um, the last one is clean break. It just means that um, you're able to separate from something unpleasant uh, cleanly. Well, not cleanly, but uh, separate it completely. Um, yeah, like a past relationship, a clean break. That uh, you delete her Facebook, delete her uh, Instagram, delete her whatever, and uh, never check back on her status again. It's a clean break. Out of sight, out of mind, right? So, let's get back to uh, the legendary Bruce Lee. Lee Yun Fan, commonly known as Bruce Lee, was a Hong Kong American actor. By the way, today, I, I, I feel actually in, in such a perfect place to be talking about idioms and fobs and bullshit like that because this guy, he's an ABC. If you don't know what an ABC is, you're not Asian. Because, yeah, all Asians know ABC means Asian-born American. Um, this guy is an ABC, but he talks like a fob. That is fucking awesome. That means even if you're born in privilege, you can still fucking not... Be up to the <laughs> expectations because okay to be to be fair to bruce he grew up in chinatown and that's that's oh we'll get into it not not probably not in this episode but like I, I guess back then in chinatown chinatown is considered part of like chinese territory so you don't have to speak english that that's that's a joke by the way um yeah who dares to uh yeah who dares to put a, a china stamp on any american soil right so um, he, he was, he was a, an ABC, but the accent that this guy has, yeah, there's only two possibilities that, that this, this combination can ever be. One is that, like this guy, he moved back to Hong Kong, or he went to Hong Kong when he was young, um, while he was still learning his languages, and the other possibility is he stayed in Chinatown for his whole life, which is not true. He was from there, but he didn't stay there for his whole life. Which, actually, a lot of Chinese people these days do. Uh, but, <laughs> okay. Ironically, if you're born in Chinatown today, you're very unlikely to stay in Chinatown. But if you came from China, or Hong Kong, or whatever, or Taiwan, or whatever, to Chinatown... Okay, by the way, Taiwanese and Hong Kong dudes and Hong Kong dudes don't stay in Chinatown, or they don't go to Chinatown. Okay, Taiwan aside. Uh... Like, only, I guess, <laughs> only the old school, um, or old generation, previous generation of immigrants from Hong Kong and also from mainland China uh, would stay, they would come to China, come to America, go to Chinatown because that's where they would find uh, possibilities uh, or to find uh, possibilities for work or um, have an opportunity without knowing the language to immediately provide for their families. So, yeah, back in the day, you can live there your whole life in Chinatown, but today, I don't think that is, that is so possible. Um, but that is not why Bruce, um, has such a cool accent, you know, like, shaped like water. You know, that, that kind of shit is not because of Chinatown, it's because this guy went back to Hong Kong, and I, I guess he, he was there for such a long time that he, uh, didn't learn the proper, like, proper English that he's supposed to learn, um, in Chinatown. But in any way, I mean, in any case, um, he is such a, yeah, he's such an accomplished Asian American as a role model. So, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna, uh, make fun of, uh, Mr. Lee's awesome accent, and, and, and we all love it. I mean, despite the way the way he uh, he portrays his his martial arts skills in in such a cool way or such an interesting way, um, we still love him. Okay, he was a Hong Kong American actor, director. Why not just American? Why a Hong Kong American actor? Um, well, I guess he's one of a kind. Think of another Hong Kong American actor. Go. Go fucking find their passports and see who's really Hong Kong American. Are they just Hong Kong actors? Um, yeah. Uh, director, martial artist, martial arts instructor, and philosopher. How about the part 
where it says conquerors of women. Um, cause yeah, he scored a white chick and then he scored an Asian chick. And then I think he died in the arms of an Asian chick. But in any case, this man, I mean, seeing the, uh, what do you call it? The libido that he has on screen, you can only imagine how he does in the bedroom. So, yeah. Mr. Lee, you are our idol. We all want to be like you. Um, you're awesome. Uh, he was the founder of Meet Junaid... <sighs> what, what am I saying? <laughs> okay. He was the founder of Ki Jundo, a hybrid martial arts philosophy drawing from different combat disciplines that is often credited with paving the way for modern mixed martial arts. All right, I got one right here. Mixed martial arts is all about pulling a move out of thin air and get you get your opponent knocked out before they even knew what was coming. Um, was that one okay? I, I think I think that was all right. Um, okay. Lee is considered by commentators, critics, media, and other martial artists to be the most influential martial artist of all time and a pop culture icon icon of the 20th century who bridged the gap between the East and the West. Oh, definitely by marriage and by his... I don't know where he keeps his uh, little black book of his conquest, but I'm sure Mr. Lee scored well. Um, with the, uh, the Asian digging girls of the, is it the 80s or the 70s? 70s. No. 60s. Yeah, 60s. He lived in the 60s. But maybe that was, back in Hong Kong was a little different, but, uh, man, we all envy you. Um, he is credited with helping to change the way Asians were presented in American films. Let me think about this. How was Asians presented in American films before Bruce Lee's time? I think the answer is they don't exist. So he definitely helped to change the Asian image in American films because actually now there is Asians in American films. I think that's what they mean. If they meant that he changed the image of an Asian American male and the roles that they, that they, that they can play as, a, as playing a lead role in American films, that is fucking bullshit, and we know it, because today, Asians are still dickless, or, what do you call it, neutered there. Sorry for using such profane, profane words, um, but Asians are still neutered in the uh, American, what do you call it, uh, popular media, or, okay, American popular media is the world's popular media. Um, it's, it's synonymous, right? You can argue, deny it, whatever, but that, that is true. We all know that's true. Um, and, um, yes, Mr. Lee, he, uh, he definitely influenced the ways that Asian guys can now play a, somewhat of a lead role in American films, but, uh, you know, guys like, oh, God, what's the, the hangover guy? Um, the guy that's, uh, with the mask singer, I have no idea. Um, anyway, it's, it's still that type of guy. That is, that is the mainstream image of Asian American, okay? This weirdo, um, kind of a, yeah, 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 kind of a clown type of guy, I guess. Um, that's, that's how Asians and, and you know, other than the whole, um, uh, nerdy stereotype, um, which is not a stereotype, which is actually absolutely accurate. Um, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's that. So this is an overstatement to the credit of Mr. Lee. Um, but I kind of know, I kind of understand where this is coming from. I think it's an Asian person. Wait, no, I mean, it's a non-Asian person who wrote this line in this Wikipedia paragraph. Um, the son of Cantonese opera star, Li Hui Chuan. Li was born in Chinatown area, the Chinatown area of San Francisco, California, on November 27th, 1940. Happy Thanksgiving, Bruce, and happy birthday. To uh, parents from Hong Kong and was raised with his family in 
Kowloon, Hong Kong. Not Kowloon, Kowloon. That's one of the largest islands. I think the largest island in Hong Kong. Yeah, by that you can tell that I'm not from Hong Kong. Um, but um, I, I uh, you know, I, I know, kind of know the uh, the general the general area. And uh, yeah, Hong Kong is a cool place. It will always be a cool place. Although it's losing some of its last uh, its luster in the last decade or so as the financial hub of Asia. Um, but still, Hong Kong's cool. And um, yeah, Bruce went back to Hong Kong. He was introduced to the film industry by his father and appeared in several films as a child actor. So that was in Hong Kong because his father, by no fucking means um, or in no freaking way, his father could have influenced or could have pulled the strings to get his kid to some roles in Hollywood films because Hollywood films had no Asians in it in the 60s. Is this the 60s? No, this is this was the 40s. Okay. Um, Lee moved to the United States at the age of 18. Oh, okay, that's where he came back to receive his higher education at the University of Washington in Seattle. Go Microsoft! And it was during this time that he began teaching martial arts. And that's how he met his wife, um, by teaching martial arts. By the way, uh, okay, let's get, get, get to all that crap later. Let's, let's, uh, let's keep going here. His Hong Kong and Hollywood produced films elevated the traditional martial arts film, to a new level of popularity and acclaim, sparking a surge of interest in the Chinese nation. <clears throat> Clarify which nation. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Chinese martial arts in the West in the 1970s. Hmm. Yeah. This is not a politically correct article because the Chinese nation, that sounds kind of like I think by that they meant the Chinese culture, because, um, yeah, I'm about to step on a political landmine, and, uh, I cannot, uh, risk getting, uh, yeah, drown myself in the, in the spits of all the, all the Chinese folks, either way. So, um, the direction and the tone of his films dramatically influence and change martial arts and martial arts films worldwide. I guess there were martial arts films before Bruce Lee's time, but um, the way he changed it was that I'm guessing that um, all the um, yeah all the kung fu elements got incorporated into it to make it look uh, cin cinematically cool and. Um, also, it's, uh, yeah, it's pleasing to the eye, um, the way that he did it. He's a true, he's a true artist. He put that art, that martial art on screen in an elegant way, and, um, that's one of his greatest accomplishments and how he influenced, uh, film and television. Oh, okay. He is noted for his roles in five feature-length martial art films in the early 1970s, Low Ways, The Big Boss, 1971, and Fist of Fury, 1972, Golden Harvest, The Way, no, Way of the Dragon, 1972, directed and written by Lee, and Golden Harvest and the Warner Brothers Enter the Dragon, this one I have heard, 1973, and The Game of Death, 1978. Both directed by Robert Close. Klaus Close. Lee became an iconic figure known throughout the world, particularly among the Chinese. I think they meant Chinese, like, oh, okay, so it could be Chinese Chinese or Chinese Americans, American Chinese, whatever. Okay. Based upon his portrayal of Chinese nationalism in his films and among Asian Americans for defying stereotypes associated with the emasculated Asian male. Yeah. Um, the Chinese nationalism. When was this? This is 1970s. Okay. Um, this is all 
always going to be, nationalism is always going to be a big theme in film and popular culture in China because of the way that the oppression of the Chinese people has suffered um, uh, in the hands of Western powers for the past what, century? Yeah, it's about a century. Two two centuries, no, 150 years, something like that. It's a, yeah, it's a thing that puts a great sense of shame on many generations of Chinese, and it's still the, the effects of which still lingers today. However, um, being a Chinese person living in America, I see that that is not just like, the scars of the Western uh, prowess or the Western power is not just uh, an influence on the Chinese culture or uh, having having uh, an effect on on Chinese people of how they view themselves and whether there's a long history of um, um, just just shame um, in the past, but it's it's also like I guess. A sense or a source of uh, lack of confidence for a lot of Asians in identifying um, with their own self, with with their own uh, what do you call it, ethnic identity. So, yeah, and, and nationalism is a great way to counter that because um, if you're proud of your country, then you're proud of who you are. And I'm, I'm speaking like for the the people the chinese people who are viewing these these films okay so if you're proud of your country you're proud of then you're proud of your heritage if you're proud of your heritage then you're proud of yourself you are at peace with who you are um although no one else might see it that way you see yourself as a um competent and confident no you can't see yourself as an confident individual but you see yourself as a competent and well worthy individual um and i think that is kind of the positive influence of the chinese nationalism um in, in the in the lives of chinese americans but um of course Chinese nationalism right now is a sensitive word because uh, media like Fox News is gonna <laughs> is gonna yeah censor that word out because um, yeah Chinese nationalism is a is a threat to American security homeland security or whatever so uh, we here living in this country we're not um, we shouldn't be embracing Chinese nationalism but you know we we should find the best way to live our own lives without talking too much politics between all the shit that is going on between China and the United States and try not to get ourselves thrown into internment camps and uh, that's the most important thing at the moment. Um, he trained in the... so sorry, I'm getting back to the article. He trained in the art of Wing Chun and later combined his other influences um, from various sources into the spirit of his personal martial arts philosophy, which he dubbed Meet Ji Kun Do, the way of the in, in, intercepting fist. Um, that's, the, that's what Ji Kun Do means, I guess. Lee had residences in Hong Kong and Seattle. Probably multiple residences. Yeah. Had he known that real estate would have been what it is today in Hong Kong and Seattle, this guy would have spent every dime that he had uh, had made from those films or television shows on real estate. That's the way to go. Okay, the future of the world is to come back for every inch of land and squeeze the maximum profit out of it and fuck other people while you're at it because you're going to buy low and once it goes high, you're going to sell it to other people. Okay, so... That's how humans are supposed to be living for the next foreseeable future. Real estate. Remember that. You can never go wrong with real estate. And that's how rich people screw poor people. Um, Lee died on July 20th, 1973 at the age of 32. There was no visible external injury. However, according to autopsy reports, 
Lee's brain had swollen considerably. Hmm, could, I, could that have been a punch? Internal bleeding? Hmm, no, I'm just kidding. The autopsy found aquagesic and what the hell is that in his system? Let me click on this word. Huh. Okay. I guess it's called equagesic. It's not equagesic. Uh, it just means aspirin. Or it's a class, I guess it's, it's a class of drugs that aspirin would belong to. Uh, is a combination of drug indicated for short-term pain treatment accompanied by tension or anxiety in patients with mus musculoskeletal disorders or tension headaches. Okay, so my, that might have suggested um, overdose of the uh, pain drug. But when doctors announced Lee's death, it was officially ruled as death by misadventure, a.k.a. overdose. Um, yeah, I don't know how, how, how people interpret that. But, um, yeah, misadventure sounds fun, but it's a sad thing that um, it took Mr. Lee's life. Since his death, Lee has continued to be a prominent influence on modern combat sport, including judo, karate, mixed martial arts, and boxing. Yeah, of course. Can you imagine Bruce Lee had lived t till his 80s? Then he would be, uh, or he would have been an old dude, just an old Asian dude. Um, I think he's influenced, and it's precisely because Bruce Lee died at the age of 32. His legacy was able to carry on and be preserved in eternity as it is, as, as, as it has been. And it, I'm not saying that his death has made him, it, he was sort of, what do you call it, um, his achievements was heightened by his death at a really inopportune time, but yeah, I think nothing can stand against the test of time, and he, at his peak in his careers, you know, in his late 20s, early 30s, the films that he made, he, he, even he himself can't really surpass that and eclipse the, the halo that he has put on himself, so I don't know if it's good or bad for his legacy. For the guy, of course, it's bad that he died, but for his legacy, I don't know if it's, it's good or bad that he he passed away at 32. Time, which is the magazine, named Lee one of the 100 most important people of the 20th century. That is not a small feat to achieve because as one of the most important... Think about this. 20th century, that's when... Both of the most of our bloodiest wars in the history of mankind took place. And, you know, like, of all the people that have shaped the trajectory of history, Bruce Lee was named among the top 100. If I were naming the top 100 most important people of the 20th century, I would probably just name the... Um, the, the, the head of states for all of the countries that were involved in World War One and World War Two, as that, as the, the most influential people because the world was in their hands. And to, for Bruce Lee as an entertainer, a martial artist, and an influencer to achieve this great feat, this is, this is great. And I got a good one. And um, it was, I guess, it was for a noble cause that time put Bruce Lee on top of the, uh, or on the top hundred list of most influential people because they'd like to be um, politically, I don't want to say well, they like to be politically correct, but they wanted to balance the influence, they, or the, these a hundred people there, um, they wanted to balance kind of like a, what do you call it? A college admissions uh, committee. Yeah, they have to balance the students. They don't want to, you know, openly say it that there's a quota for Asians. Um, what is, what is that word called? Um, affirmative action, something like that. Um, yeah, 
there's a quota for Asians, there's a quota for uh, uh, Caucasians, there's a quote for Blacks, there's a quote for everything else. You know, it's um, you got you got to put enough people on that list of a hundred so everybody can be happy. And um, it was it was for a noble cause of in the name of um, world peace. Uh, I guess. Actually, for a noble cause, that it's a better usage of it mm, would be, uh, I don't know, this puts too much disrespect to Mr. Bruce, but um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I just thought like about about the, uh, the painkillers that he was taking. Um, it was for a noble cause because he didn't do it for his entertainment. He did it probably because he wanted to, uh, you know, to influence or to to uh, inspire inspire his creativity as an artist. So he probably did it for a noble cause. There we go. He probably did it for a noble cause, but it ended up uh, costing him his life. So it's a really fat, a really sad uh, uh, story or a really sad ending for Bruce, Mr. Lee, um, and. Um, we we feel really we feel really bad for him for uh yeah for for that for that tragic event. <sighs> okay, where am I still missing? Okay, goes up in smoke and clean break. Goes up in smoke. Let's see. Yeah. Um. How about this? With the passing of Bruce Lee, the hopes of Asian Americans taking other leading roles in American films or world cinema on the world stage goes up in smoke. Yeah, what a, what a gigantic loss. A clean break. Oh, I can't come up with a, with a good example of, oh, there we go. Um, by moving uh, by moving his with his family back to Hong Kong from San Francisco, Bruce Lee did not have a clean break with his American roots. There we go. There we go. I like that. Um, so he, <laughs> so he did not have a clean break, and that was why um, it was so hard to come up with a sentence using the phrase "clean break" because there was no clean break in Bruce Lee's career. He needed to connect the dots and to be able to utilize his resources from all different directions to become what he was. Yeah, he was a great businessman too, I guess, and uh, just a great, a very savvy person to really push his career to the to his limits and um, leave us with, yeah, a glamorous image of what a young Asian guy can be on the big stage, on the big world stage, yeah? And uh, thank you so much for listening to me blabbing, and I am going to sign off. Peace.